praise jesus i hope you are well so i have a word a meditation for us today uh i hope you have been well first of all um i have been married but uh, that's a story for another day <laughs> i'm talking about discouragement today and i pray that um we'll just i'll pray that the lord will speak to someone um through this video lord jesus i pray that you give someone um, some light and understanding and you speak to their heart into their situation so this is my prayer for you as i come into this video and i have uh, some scriptures that i will share and i prayed for everyone who's going to be listening to this video especially those who are going through any kind of discouragement and w what i felt uh, the word that i wanted to share i was speaking to a few people and discouragement is such a common tool and strategy that the devil uses in the life of a christian for the devil to make you stop your prayer life he doesn't need you to commit a big sin he needs you to stop believing that god still has believes in the dream he had for you you remember that dream that you had about your life that you're going to be a great person that life is going to work out that you will do so many great things for god and now maybe your weaknesses are coming in the way uh, uh, maybe your career is not progressing as you want maybe your family life is not as you expected it or maybe you're praying for so long to meet a life partner and my god the gps is not working they are not finding you <laughs> or you are praying to to receive a certain level of intimacy with god or even a different vocation or you are already in that vocation in that marriage in that religious life and it just feels like this mountain is not moving well, I'm here to tell you that what will move the mountain is not your strength, it's it's your faith. <laughs> and I'm here to remind you, in the book of Ephesians, as it Paul said, I think it's um, chapter 6, verse 10, one was the armor of God. One of the verses says, above all things, you know, put on the shield of faith that you may be able to quench all the arrows, evil arrows of the evil one. Discouragement is not a joke. You should not play when you feel constantly discouraged. You should address it in prayer. And the scripture that I have that I'm going to start with, I have several, but the one that I'll start with now is in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. Your girl has notes today. <laughs> glory, glory. Anyway, so the word of God says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And then it says, you know, let your gentleness be known to all the Lord is near. But verse 6, do not worry. This is the word of God, it's not me. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your request be known to god saint paul is saying if you are distressed you are discouraged the route is not by crying you can cry to god by all means but not by crying on your own not by talking and venting with your friends that those ones do them after prayer but he says by prayer and supplication let your request be known to god because you know god can can also hear us as we are venting <laughs> i've stopped joking pray when you're discouraged, be intentional and pray. I remember, for example, for me, a particular occasion, maybe two years back, and the Lord had promised me something that I really needed, but it was taking long. And I even remember praying with the certain friends of mine who are spiritual people, and one of them has a gift of your word of knowledge. And he basically told me, the Lord is on the case. He knows exactly what he's going to do. How it's going to happen is that you're going to do things in your own strength and when it fails when you feel like you have failed you'll do something beyond your imagination and that is exactly what happened but what i'm saying is in that season maybe this speaks to someone i was so tired emotionally i was so you know because of anxiety anxiety and discouragement wears down even our physical strength and I, I remember I had the privilege at that time, by the grace of God, to be in a house where there was a blessed sacrament. So even at 3 a.m. in the morning, I could wake up and go for adoration. And it was just me and Jesus in the chapel. And I remember the Lord would wake me up. And I would go, and every single time, the Lord kept me giving me amazing, like scriptures I had never seen before. And all of them were about blessing. All of them were about prosperity. All of them were great promises of God. Until like I used to cry in that chapel just because my emotions were confused. Like what I see physically and what the Lord is speaking are two different things. Those are like those times I learned how to walk by faith and not by sight. And I know it's not easy. So I have some tips for you if you are discouraged. First, St. Paul said, Philippians 4 verse 4 to 8, but specifically verse 6. 
by prayer and supplication not by complaining not by venting the israelites we know what happens when you keep complaining it doesn't work you will just be more discouraged more frustrated intentionally don't ignore that discouragement sit with the lord so the first thing is pray and why are you praying god is our confidant god is our confidant so if you're going through something today let me tell you jesus feels your pain he knows he knows you need a job he knows you need a spouse he knows you have a spouse you need a child he knows you need a, a different kind of vocation he knows but the one thing that i also invite you to is is to know that he is your friend he cares for you and he wants to carry your pain before i get to that point let me speak about another one first is prayer the second one is gratitude one of the things that happens to us when we are discouraged or when we are facing a mountain is we forget that the lord parted the red sea before us in the past we forget it, it gratitude is such a powerful tool and to fight against discouragement so i'm here to remind you if you're going through a situation be intentional first of all your daily prayer routine should be clear if you have to make it a timetable please do because you are in battle for joy <laughs> Joy is a weapon of of the spirit, of the Holy Spirit for us to sustain grace, joy and peace, and these are come from the Lord. So pray, be intentional about your prayer life. Second, pray with gratitude. Paul and Silas taught us how to fight when things look like they are not working. They are preaching the gospel. They have served this living God who raised the dead, who healed the sick, and here they are in prison. And what do they do in midnight? Praise the Lord in a loud voice. When your discouragement is not the time to play with praise, is the time to praise. Force yourself to praise and worship the living God. Because the truth is, even if things look like they are not working out, there are many things that are working that God is doing. Let me give you an example. There was a time I was sick some time back. I have never appreciated my stomach, <laughs> the ability to eat like be that time i knew one thing even if life sometimes look like it's difficult you can eat like you are you you have the ability to eat maybe the food may or may not be there but you know that if you put food on your mouth you don't have to to think how it will go through your body god has already put that system in place i could not eat there was a time just because of some my stomach was sensitive to some medication I remember that night I prayed to Jesus and I said, Jesus, I'm sorry if I did not eat well before taking this medicine and now I cannot eat anything. I was in pain. I couldn't even take painkillers because I couldn't keep it down because my stomach cannot keep it down. And the grace that I was praying to God for and crying for is, Jesus, let my stomach work so that I can take painkillers and I promise I will eat. My God, the next morning when I woke up and I had appetite to eat and I could keep food down, I didn't throw up. My people, I thanked the Lord. <laughs> you know the things that you cry about like in tears of thanks, you like Jesus, thank you. Because the consequences of things going wrong would have cost a lot of money and I don't even know what would have happened. Today, if you have a problem, there are many things God is doing for you and me that we don't know. You can see. You can see because you're watching this video. <laughs> you can eat. You can cry. You can go to the toilet normally. Like these are things we take for granted but might... Who, nobody prays for sickness. Sometimes sickness just happens. And even if you are sick, just sit with the Lord and find things to thank the Lord about. I'm telling you, with thanksgiving, the cross that we are carrying becomes lighter. You have family. Maybe you have friends. You have community. These are gifts of the Lord. You know? May the Lord console you and tell you i know well i know very well the plans i have in mind for you i know plans for your welfare and not for your destruction to give you a future full of hope do not let your hearts be troubled this is john 14 1. believe in god believe also in me and it is many are the trials of the just but the lord delivers them from them all you know be still and know that i am god I am exalted above the nations, exalted on the face of the earth. Psalms 12, 6 to 7 says, The promises of the Lord are pure. Other versions say, The promises of the Lord are sure. Silver refined in a crucible, silver purified seven times. You know, 
and he says in Psalms 121, he will not let your foot be. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. You know, he will keep your life. He will keep your going out and your coming in. In this season of discouragement that I was in about two, three years ago, one of the scriptures that the Lord gave me that I had never seen before is, is he told me to open the word of God. And I saw the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 16. Sorry, 28, verse 16. And it says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, see, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone a tested stone tried and tested a precious cornerstone a sure foundation those who trust in him will not panic jesus was telling me child stop panicking i am the foundation stone you put your trust in me i am tried and tested i am a cornerstone you know what is a cornerstone God, if he's the cornerstone of your life, he will keep things in place. Jesus was telling, you are not the foundation of your life, Jesus was saying, I am the foundation. I am tried and tested and this word of God is amazing. How the word of God speaks exactly to what we are feeling. He says, those who trust in it will not panic. Now I will leave you with, <laughs> with your God to think about life. And remember, that your hand, in the hand of God is your name. He says, I have written your name on the palm of your hand. And your ways are always before me. In the book of Isaiah chapter 41, this was a God verse 13. If your problem is your weaknesses, the Lord gave me this scripture again sometime. I'm still going through many seasons. But if you feel like you are not, you are not, you, what, you are not good enough for something, you know. The Lord says, in the book of Isaiah 41 verse 13, you know, first it starts from let's start from verse ten. Fear not, for I am with you. Meditate upon these words in your situation. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And the Lord said in verse thirteen, He says, even though you are but a worm, I, like another version says, even though you are but a maggot, like basically you are very weak. Like somebody can step on you and you are gone. Like you, I will make you a threshing sledge, sharp, new, and having teeth. I will leave you to the research of Google to find what is a threshing sledge. But just from, basically, the Lord will make you something so strong. Threshing, thresh, oh my God. <laughs> a threshing sledge, I think, is made sometimes out of bone or out of stone. It's a, basically a strong instrument that is used for harvest. For harvest. You know, the Lord, meditate upon this with the Holy Spirit for him to speak himself to you. But he says, even though you are but a womb, sometimes even if you step on it, you don't know that you stepped on something. You know, you might be that weak, but the Lord will make you an instrument that can even like be useful for such a key thing. You know, during the harvest, without an instrument to harvest, nothing can happen. You can be an insignificant worm, maggot thing, whatever. But the Lord can make you a key instrument in his hand sharp he said a threshing sledge not old not weak sharp new and having teeth you know the lord is god you know may god i i i speak i also am a i'm going through my own like life and i don't know why the lord keeps bringing me back and i really appreciate like the lord gives me bringing me back to think about making youtube videos because i keep like speaking to people and i'm like you know actually i should have said uh, the, what you're talking to me about there's that something that the lord said to me to make a video and i made it but i have i haven't edited it i haven't posted it so i keep on repeating things that like when i'm talking to my some of my friends and all and i really hope that this encourages you or encourages someone in their journey don't lose sight of Christ when you're walking on water. If Christ has brought you this far, you know it is not you, it is God. You will not sink because the one who has sent you is faithful. The one who has called you is faithful. You will only start sinking when you start focusing on yourself. Remember, it's not by might. It's not by power. It is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So we have to force our flesh to submit to the spirit now, if you're going through discouragement, some people that I'll refer to you, first is St. Paul, second is Blessed Virgin Mary. It's not time to keep calling people, talking. We can call and talk to some people who are mature in faith, but it's not time to vent. It's not time to spend time watching videos. It's not time to run and escape. 
it's time to sit in silence with the Lord. Blessed Virgin Mary kept all these things in her heart. When the when when the prophet Simon to, Simeon told her this sword will pierce your own heart, and she saw many things. You know, there was a time I was meditating on the joyful mysteries, and I'll just give you like a short <laughs> analysis. And the Lord brought to my mind actually those mysteries were not very joyful feeling to Blessed Virgin Mary. They are joyful in their mission, but the implementation cost a lot. You know, the first joyful mysteries, the Annunciation, there was a lot of anxiety associated with this message. She didn't know what will happen. The second mystery is the visitation and it basically the birth of Christ. We celebrate the birth of Christ as a joyful mystery. But the, for me, when I was meditating, what the Lord brought to my mind was the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine a pregnant woman on a donkey walking through the desert for many days going to Bethlehem? When they get to Bethlehem, there is nowhere for her to give birth. They have to ask for permission and all the inns have refused the king or kings. It was in a cow shed that she's giving birth. Maybe it was just her and Joseph, no midwife. What does Joseph know about helping a woman to give birth? It looks like joyful mysteries. But for me, what the Lord was putting in my heart, there was a cost there was paying. That Blessed Virgin Mary especially had to carry for this joy to come into the world. So I'm here to tell you and to remind you of another person called Joseph. The God who would give you a dream may not have told you the pain that you will go through. But there is a man called Joseph who dreamt. And the pain that he went through looked like it was the dream not working. But it was actually through that pain that the dream came to pass. The way it was through the pain and the cooperation of Mary with grace that Jesus, the joy of the world came. That is why we call it the joyful missus. But truly, it was at a cost. Joseph, he was thrown into the pit. And when he went into the pit, in human eyes, it would have looked like the dream has been aborted. But my dear, it was through being thrown into that pit that they sold him to Egypt, which was his destination of destiny. You know, destination is from the word destiny. It was his destination. Where you are going is where your destiny is. If you keep walking with God, it may not look like it. Joseph goes to Egypt he does something good for God. He rejects Potiphar's wife. He's trying to live a holy life. He's thrown into prison. And I used to think God dream, you know, sometimes God can make us wait for promises. God was not just blindly making Joseph wait. In that prison, he was supposed to meet someone who would introduce him to the king for that dream and destiny to come to pass. In the prison, Joseph was introduced to the king's cupbearer. And I want you to go and read the book of Genesis chapter 40. There's a very interesting thing that happens. Joseph was in prison before this, the cupbearer of the king and someone else, the baker of the king. And they're thrown into prison and they're put under him for him to take care of them. Meaning Joseph, even in prison, excelled. <laughs> even in prison, he was promoted. And in prison, he was taking care of these people. And one day he comes to them and he sees them sad. And he asks you, he asks them, why are you sad? You know what that means? It means Joseph was not sad in prison. <laughs> okay, he must have been discouraged at some point. But the fact that he's emotionally aware of the sadness of people tells me he's in a position to care, meaning he's not distressed and overwhelmed. Basically, what I'm saying, Joseph, he had to go through the pit and the prison. But it was through those, if you look behind what it looks like in the human eye, God is working. And then he goes before the king and life changes. And you know what, what was the sustaining grace for Joseph from the beginning of when he, the dream until now? His relationship and his intimacy with God. Joseph became who he was in Egypt because he could interpret dreams, because he had the intimacy with God. Your gift, the gift that the Lord has for you is very specific and nobody may even know its meaning or its use except the Lord. But if you stay with the Lord, that gift that nobody knows about, even you think is useless, that gift is what the Lord will use for your life. Jesus, I don't know how to say this. Be passionate about the vision of God for your life because nobody else understands it. Nobody else knows it. Even you yourself may not grasp why you have certain feelings of you should do things for God or you should do things in business or in politics. The gift God has given you is a secret between you and him. 
and even you may not know many things until the time that you can handle them amen so persevere the last thing that i want to say is sometimes we get discouraged because we expect things to be instant i want to tell to remind you of the promise of joseph the life of mary she was told by the angel you shall be called blessed <laughs> Many generations will call you blessed. I have noticed one thing about God. When God is communicating his vision to men and to you, he will show you mostly the grand part, the end result. He will not usually show you the process. He will reveal to you the process as you go because it will overwhelm you. <laughs> it will overwhelm you. He told the blessed Virgin Mary to the angel, you shall be called blessed. So many grand things. But oh. The cross was not there in that message. In the same way, Joseph. In the same way, Joseph now the one of uh, Jacob. In the same way, David. You know, David, some time back I read the word of God and I was calculating the years. It may be off by a few. But it took David more than, I think, seven years after he was anointed by Samuel for him to be king of Israel, for him to now be recognized as king of, I think, Judah. And then another number of years for him to now be king over the entire Israel. Total, I believe it took about more than, I think, 15 years. But you can research. What I'm trying to tell you, a child takes nine months to be born. If God has given you a vision about your life, one of the reasons we get discouraged is we forget that there is a process. And then in the process, we believe that it is because of our strength that it should come to pass. If you feel like the dream God has given you is too big for you, the Lord also gave us this scripture in the book of Exodus to Moses as well. Who is it that gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute and able to speak or deaf or hearing? It is the Lord. Basically, sometimes the Lord makes us try with our own strength and fail so that the day anything succeeds, we know it is only God. So this should give you courage. If you feel like you're not able, like you, the Lord has given you the vocation of family, but you have different kinds of weaknesses and you're struggling, your prayer life is not working, whatever ministry the Lord has given you, business, career, you just need more grace. That is perfect. Power is made perfect in weakness. It's a thing that, you know, not by mind, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. The Lord is our source. Sometimes the process humbles us so that we know we are nothing without God. And all the glory should return to him. But above all else, believe in God. Believe in God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You know, when this word of God, one day I was meditating about, upon it, and the Lord put my focus on this first phrase, phrase, do not let. Meaning, we have authority over our heart. Even our heart, if it wants to be anxious and troubled, we have authority to control it by scripture and by prayer. So that we do not be anxious. You know, every single word of God that the Lord says, do not be anxious, it sounds like a very strange thing. You know, do not be anxious. It's like, no, it's just like my heart just feels anxious. I cannot control it. No, God is saying you have power over your emotions. When you start to feel anxious, when you start to feel discouraged, start to do intentional things so that you do not let your heart be troubled. In the word of God, in the book of Philippians chapter 4, from verse 6 is about surrendering to the Lord with petition. Verse 8, it says, Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Verse 7. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What does this word of God mean? It means that when God tells you to have peace in the middle of the storm, it is not in your head that you will understand how it will work. He who is a prince of peace, surpasses understanding. And that peace is what will guard our hearts and minds. That peace is what will guard. Meaning without that peace, our hearts and minds will be destroyed by anxiety and discouragement. And you know what the Lord means by guarding your heart? You know your heart is the source of your intimacy with God, your prayers, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And this guarding your heart is not just for you not to be anxious. It's because when your heart is anxious and disturbed, it's very difficult for you to hear God and for you to pray. So peace guards your heart so that you can still be, have grace and energy to keep working with God. Because the one agenda of discouragement is to put you, to distract you, to stop you from walking towards the vision, to make you think that this vision is not working. 
to make you stop doing your prayer life, to make you stop sitting with the word of God, to disrupt your peace. You know, I want to tell you, something, sometimes when the Lord is working, it doesn't look like it. When Joseph was in the pit, when he was in the prison, when Jesus was on the cross, it looked like the devil was winning. But these were the moments of greatest victory. So stay there where you are. Keep silence and pray and keep going. And the last tip that I would give is lean on the good friends that the Lord has given you. Community is very important when you're going through seasons of discouragement. Pillars of faith that God has put in your side. You know, stay in community. Don't stay in isolation. A wounded animal is the easiest to kill because most of the time they stay in isolation. Like, I, I don't want to make this much longer than it is, but um, community is powerful. Even if you are an, a prayer warrior yourself, there comes times when you need people to pray over you and speak a word. And I remember like when I was speaking about this experience of mine a few years, like two and a half years back or something, just a word from someone can encourage you so much. But anyway, let me not make this video too long. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, even if it looks like it's not working. And do not rely on your own intelligence. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Whether it's working or not, he will make straight your paths. And the last word of God I want to leave you with is in the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This is the last thing I want to share. There are many times, there are times in my prayer life when I go to, in my prayer, and I'm sharing these things because I feel like they'll encourage someone. It's not that I'm saying I have uh, such a prayer life. Even me, I'm, it's because I struggle with these things. That's why the Lord can speak to me these things, you know. So there, was a time, there are times when I go to prayer and this is the importance of fighting for your prayer life. I go to prayer and I bring about other things but because the Lord knows our hearts and he's so sensitive more than us, he'll bring up something. I remember there was a time he told me, how did this incident make you feel? And I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, we are praying, we are, in, we are interceding now, what is this? But he opened my heart and I realized that I was hurt about something and that, that someone did or someone said, but I did not talk to him about it. It's because I didn't think it was that important. Like, it just I ignored it because I didn't feel like I was, I, I didn't think I was what, what. What am I saying? Jesus cares about the state of your heart more than you do. Jesus cares when you are hurt more than you do. So when he allows some things to happen, it's not because he doesn't care. And basically the Lord in this, I, I understood from that incident of prayer that the Lord loves, is like, he cares. You know, this word of God that says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Like Jesus is saying literally, dump your anxiety on me. The Lord is hurt when we hide our pain from him or we do not take him as our first confidant. You know, when you're in pain, who do you run to? Do you first run to your friend or you run first to Jesus? Cry first with Jesus. Then after that, if you still feel like you need, then call someone, you know. But cast all, all. He said all, not small ones, not only big ones, all, because he cares for you. And the book of Matthew, is in chapter 11, 28 to 30, he also says, come to me, you know, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. Basically, I leave you with that word of God. Trust in the Lord. Rest in Him. Rest in Him. Jesus is jealous to share our pain and our journey with us. Don't be discouraged. Discouragement has destroyed many prayer lives. Discouragement distracts. Just remember this. It took David many years, about 15, I can stand to be corrected, for him to actually be king. When the Lord speaks a vision over your life, it doesn't mean it will come to pass tomorrow. He gave a promise to Abraham, I don't know how many years, just Google it, how many years it took Abraham from the promise to the time he saw Isaac. You, if you want to know it took a long time, it took such a long time that, that his wife, uh, Sarah, suggested that he sleep with her guy to get a child. That was how long it had taken. I believe the last time I was researching this, I think it was about 25 years from what I saw. My friend, <laughs> the promises of the Lord sometimes take time. That is why our greatest fulfillment is not the promise. It is in the communion with the promise giver. It is in walking. Our, our consolation is in communion with God. So I'll not make this video more than 30 minutes. But 
if you are discouraged or if you know someone who is discouraged and let us also be pillars of support to one another let us pray for one another if you have a friend that you know is going through something call people once in a while pray with them pray for them even in your personal prayer life and let us stay grounded in the word of god because above all it is his word that can can is a, a hammer that crushes the rocks of anxiety of discouragement and you know gives us peace let our hearts receive his love so do not let your hearts be troubled do not let them Mm -mm. believe in god and believe also in christ jesus amen and may the peace of god that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds amen and we shall focus on him as we walk on the storm and on the water and those who trust in him will not be put to shame those who fix their eyes on him will 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 this word of god look to him and be radiant so that your faces shall never never be ashamed he is faithful he is trustworthy he is a tried and tested stone and may these scriptures bless your heart amen